Assalamu alaikum. Good morning to everyone. Uh, I think, uh, first of all, I would thank all the organizers for this event and all the people who have attended here. And I'm going to use this platform to convey my message of drop objects. Uh, if we talk about drop objects, basically drop objects can happen anywhere. I'll give you a few examples within the slide. It's just going to take around 14 minutes, 15 minutes. I will try my best to convey my message to each and every one of you, and I would like you people as well to convey this message to different sectors. Today I'm presenting Drops Oman chapter. I'm a committee member for this. Basically, I'm working in a branch as a, as a HSC team lead uh, in oil and gas industry. Today our topics or today's agenda, what we'll be discussing about is we'll be discussing about drops. We'll be discussing about drops Oman chapter, introducing them completely. We'll be discussing about memberships, and we'll be discussing about how can you be a member in this and interfaces in this subject. We're going to discuss about uh, drop object management, red zones we're going to discuss, secondary retention, and a couple of other things we'll start on that. But uh, before I start on this, people will be asking, thinking that what is drop object, and maybe this is couple of people I've been in discussion with since yesterday and today, they think that drop object is just a thing that happens in the field, only in drilling rigs or in the field. No team, drop objects can happen anywhere, any place. Even in this hall also it can happen. So I'll give you a few examples of that or a few incidents which took in place in Oman. Whatever example I'm going to give you, it is not outside of Oman, it is within Oman. A few years back in 2012, we had an incident in one of our fields that a chief electrician was working uh, with the cable tray. They lifted up eight meters height. The cable tray was at eight meters, and he was right under the load. The, it, it, it misbalanced, and it dropped in his head. It cut his head, and he passed away. This happened within our industry, within Oman. So this is, we can say, about objects that which fall from height. That is called drop object and how we're going to manage them. Another incident I will tell you that which it took place in, in homes or, or in places that which we live in. There was, back in 2017, there was an incident which took place in Oman where a small kid with her brothers and sisters that was playing on, on their house balcony and during playing, one of that uh, lady, she was around uh, kid basically, 14 years kid, she dropped from sixth floor to the ground. She died. So drop object is not just an item. It can be a person also. A person also can drop. Similar events, it can happen at your own house as well. Sometimes you see people that are working on top, on the uh, second floor. Kids are playing with mobiles. Mobiles can drop down. One event happened. Kid was playing with a mobile, normal GSM. Two brothers were fighting for mobile, and the one kid throw the mobile by mistake, it went down. Her, there was one uncle's kid was sitting down. He looked up and the mobile came on his eyes. The, the kid lost its eyes completely. So drop object is a really serious matter, team. It can happen at home. It can happen anywhere. So today we'll discuss about that. I will try to convey my message to you all. And please take these messages at home. Take these messages to your colleagues. Tell them about these drops. Because it is still harming and still killing. We move. First of all, I'm going to discuss about drops. What is drops? Drops is an industry-wide initiative focused on preventing drops incidents. This is drop. Drops, basically, they come in order to prevent the incidents that which are happening at our places or our industry completely. With the ultimate goal of delivering second nature drop objects prevention strategies across our industry. Drops, objects, basically, drops is a global workshop. They come with strategies, they inform us, they tell us how can we control these drop objects. Other than that, we can say, yeah, they are represented by 200, if you can see here, they're represented by 200 operators, contractors, and services. And all of them, they're having one goal, just to prevent drop objects. If we can be, or if we can contribute in saving someone's life, it will be much better. What is, uh, so now I'm going to introduct, introduct about Drops Oman Chapter. What is Drop Oman Chapter? Basically, Drops Oman Chapter, Drops Oman Chapter was formed in 
September 2017 to assist with delivery to drops global messaging to Sultanate of Oman. So whatever drops incidents they are having, whatever things that they have, whatever controls are in their place, we do communicate with them and we take that messages like these platforms we use to convey to everyone. Definitely we are working in, in oil and gas industry, we convey the messages over there completely. But like these platforms where you have different type of people, we take opportunity and convey our message to them as well. Our, uh, our approach is same. So we are all committee members of this one. Our, our goal is just to ensure that the incident doesn't happen in place. We convey a message to them and how can we control them. This is Oman Drop Chapter. So if we look at this, task groups will be formed based on issues that needs to be addressed. In this Oman Drops chapter, we have got a couple of things. We have got Ministry of Manpower, who are the current members of this. We have got Opal, who is the current member of this Drops Oman chapter. We have got operators like Oman Oil, BP, PDO, all are members of this one. And we've got contractors, Abraj, myself, I'm in this group. And we've got a couple of more teammates. And we are looking even more. After this, I finish my presentation. If anyone is interested, can come to the outside and we can register your name as well to be a part of our team to discuss about this. Okay, let's go to the topic now. Now we get into the real topic. Understanding of drop object. What is drop object? Any, any object or item that falls from its previous position, that is drop object. In this room, we can say like this light is a drop object. Projector on top of you people is a drop object. <laughs> Structure of which is holding this is a drop object. So anything that falls from a previous position, that can be a drop object. If we talk about uh, drop object categories, it's good because it's not having a secondary attention. <laughs> good. Drop object categories, we have only two drop object categories. It is not complicated at all. It is very simple. We have got one is static, the other one is dynamic. I will try to explain you in a very simple way. What is static? drop object and what is dynamic. Any object that falls from its previous position under its own weight, where the gravity takes over. A couple of people did not understand. So anyway, I'll tell you in a simple way. Suppose this light is here, or that projector is there. With the time going on, with the corrosion, automatically it drops. With its own weight, there was no force applied, automatically dropped to the ground. That is called as the static. Dynamic, anything that you apply force on. I'm having this remote. If I throw on the light, it hits the light, the light drops down, that will be a dynamic drop object. So something has applied force on. This is the only two categories in drops. So it is really simple and for everyone to understand. What are the common drop objects? So drop objects, we can say what are the common elevators, shakers, lights, structures, all these things can be as a drop objects. I'm trying to put a couple of examples in this room so people can understand better who are not working in oil and gas industry, basically. Drop object, it can be this one as well, team. If you all people can see this one, it can be a drop object as well. You're driving a car, there is another car in front of you which is having loads which are not secured, and you are right behind it. Anything can drop on that into your vehicle. That can be a drop object. Take a message, convey to your family if you're driving a vehicle, any other cars having tools which are not secured, or people are just shifting their houses, they don't secure anything, that object can fall into your car and it can cause a really uh, big incident. One of the incidents also has happened due to this case. One of our colleagues, his family at least lost her full hand, it got cut due to this. An object dropped from the front vehicle, it hit this vehicle, they rolled over and her hand came under the door, it was completely cut off. So. This all incidents happen in Oman. So if we can convey the message, prevent them, it will be much better. This kind of couple of things that which we say, uh, examples of drops, like if we can look here for a rester without securing sling, you can see like this projector is not having a sec secondary sling. Means with the time if it fails, there is nothing else to hold it. So automatically it will drop down. Maybe the fittings are not damaged or something, it can cause another to drop. Maybe there is no safety pins. With the time, movement, vibration, it can also drop. So these all kind of things cause drop objects. What causes drop objects? Basically, if we say, what causes drop object? If you're not going to do proper inspection, repairs, maintenance, uh, neglected tools means you ignore things, or homemade tools, all these kind of things can cause drop objects. Poor housekeeping can cause drop object as well. 
if we move forward planning, if you're not going to plan, all these kind of things can cause a uh, drop object. Poor behavior, working in unsafe condition and unsafe areas, that also can cause a drop object. This is a couple of the things just to uh, clarify. I'll move on. Like if the hooks, they're not properly lifting gears, they're not properly, like dishes which you are having at home for watching TVs, if they're stored at top, not checked properly, they're loose, they can drop from height to the ground and maybe kids are playing down. So ensure that homes, whatever dishes you are having, your satellites on top, should be placed properly. Check them by yourself if they're correct or not. This kind of things can cause. If there is vibration overloaded, all these kind of things can cause drop objects. If their procedures are not followed in our industry, it can cause drop object. If people are working at height without lanyards, it can cause a drop objects. So this is a couple of examples, poor storage, overloaded, things that which you keep them on top, they can cause drop objects. I'm moving because we've got short of time. Have a look at this video. I hope it will show you something. Drop object, it can happen at home. Kids just playing, they don't have time, they don't have understanding of drop objects. It can cause a drop object. So this is calculation of joules, basically. Uh, very simple, I'll make it. If you have a bottle of water weighs 0.5 kgs with the height of 8.5 meter multiplied by 9.8, that is joules, it can be 41 joules. Means anything above 40 joules, it can cause to a recordable case or worse. I will show you a video so it can be even simple and easy way. This test was really done by Drops Global, and they have shared a video with me so that I will be showing you. A bolt of drop from 27 meters, which weighs around 220 grams. What can cause, basically? Uh, just you can have a look on this. This is we tried with the helmet, and the person was down. As a test only, that to show you if a person is wearing helmet and, and the person is down, what can cause? Have a look at this. The bolt went through the helmet into the head, completely snatched it off. So this is drop object, it is really dangerous. And we need to, we need to take it seriously. That's why actually we, I even joined in Drop Soman chapter so that I can convey my message to majority of people. If you are a person like me who doesn't, does not like calculations, you can go online and, and download it, the, the Drops uh, calculator, it will be easy for you. If not, I'll be right outside after I finish my presentation. Any one of you can join us and we can discuss about this. Couple of prevention controls and couple of medication controls. Prevention controls is we are having good planning, good permit work, good toolbox stocks, good GSS. All these things can be in place. Checklist inspection, they can be there. Medication controls, if these things fail, what are we having in, in place of them? Securing system, red zone management, barriers, all these things. If those fail, so we are having something else which will not allow an incident to happen. So that's what we are having here. Other than this, we have got red zone management across our industry. I hope everyone is having this. If not, I can support you in giving you all this. Any people are working with the tools which are at height, ensure that they're having lanyard, inspected, checked, and everything. Drops inspections, we are having weekly basis. We are having annually. We are having every two years. Other than that, like this session, what we are doing is conveying the message to everyone giving the knowledge to everyone, training to the people so that they can understand what is really drop object in order for them to prevent them in future. This kind, couple of signs you can see drop objects. Suppose you're outside walking, if you see this sign, know that there is something above you which can cause a drop object. Helmet PP, always PP is the last line of defense, so don't consider it as a first. Okay team, uh, drop objects are still killing, still harming, so what are you going to do about it? Get involved, share best practices, be involved, work as a team. Believe me, sharing these messages of drop object, this is my last presentation, there is nothing else than that. Always, whenever you share your information to the other person, whatever experience you have, you share to other person, it can help him to develop as a person or it can save someone's life. Always believe that when we work in our industry, we work for safety for five things. First of all, work for safety for yourselves, that is number one. Number two, work for safety for your families. There is someone waiting for you. You have to be safe due to them. Number three, work for safety for your colleagues. If you see someone doing something wrong, intervene, stop them, guide them. Number four, work for safety for your companies. Whatever companies we are working in, we need to work for safety for that so they can go ahead, move forward. And the last one, 
work for your safety, for your future. Whatever you are today, you can be better if you are safe, if there is nothing happened to you. That only will things will cause. See, these five fingers, they're not, they not the same, all of them. But if you put them together, then they are all the same, right? We all need to put ourselves together as a team and convey this message across our industry of drops. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.